Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopijana Vallabha Girivaradhari Jai Gopijana Vallabha Girivaradhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Mr. Bhad Paramahansa, Paravadika Acharya Astrotar, the Shri Shri Mahat, the Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada, Jai. Iskan BBT founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada, Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Paravadika Acharya Astrotar, the Shri Shri Mahat, the Divine Grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Jai. Ananda Koti Vaishnava Nikki, Jai. Nama Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur, Jai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Jai. Samaveta Bhakta Vrindaki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shiguru and Gauranga. Okay. Page 637. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. On this 15th day of July, 2020 in San Diego, a reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are on the final verse of chapter 16 entitled The Divine and the Demoniac Natures, text 24 on page 637. Tasmat chastram pramanam te. Kaya kaya vivastitao. Gat vashastra badhanoktam. Karma karta miharasi. Tasmat chastram pramanam te. Kaya kaya vivastitao. Gatva Shasta Badhanoktam Karma Karta Miharasi Tasmat Chastram Pramanam Te Karya Karya Navastitao Gatva Shasta Badhanoktam Karma Karta Miharasi Tasmat Chastram Pramanam Te Kaya Karya Vivastitao Gatva Shastra Badhanoktam Karma Karta Miharasi Tasmat Chastram Pramanam Te Kaya Karya Vivastitao Jatva Shastra Badhanoktam 
karma karta mihar hasi. Tasmat therefore shast. Oh, Ed, you want to try it? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Tasmat shastram pramanam te. Karya karya devastitao. Jatva shastra vidhanoktam. Karma karta miharasi. Tasmat therefore shastram, the scriptures, pramanam, evidence, te, your, karya, duty. Akarya and forbidden activities, Vyavastitao, in determining, Gatva, knowing, Shastra of Scripture, Vidhana, the regulations, Uktam, as declared, Karma, work, Kartum, do, Iha, in this world, Arhasi, you should. Translation One should therefore understand what is duty and what is not duty by the regulations of the Scriptures. Knowing such rules and regulations, one should act so that he may gradually be elevated. Purport. As stated in the 15th chapter, all the rules and regulations of the Vedas are meant for knowing Krishna. If one understands Krishna from the Bhagavad Gita and becomes situated in Krishna consciousness, engaging himself in devotional service, he has reached the highest perfection of knowledge offered by the Vedic literature. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made this process very easy. He asked people simply to chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, and to engage in the devotional service of the Lord and eat the remnants of foodstuff offered to the deity. One who is directly engaged in all these devotional activities is to be understood as having studied all Vedic literature. He has come to the conclusion perfectly. Of course, for the ordinary persons who are not in Krishna consciousness, or who are not engaged in devotional service, what is to be done and what is not to be done must be decided by the injunctions of the Vedas. One should act accordingly, without argument. That is called following the principles of Shastra or Scripture. Shastra is without the four principal defects that are visible in the conditioned soul, imperfect senses, the propensity for cheating, certainty of committing mistakes, and certainty of being illusioned. These four principal defects in conditioned life disqualify one from putting forth rules and regulations. Therefore, the rules and regulations as described in the Shastra, being above these defects, are accepted without alteration by all great saints, acharyas, and great souls. In India, there are many parties of spiritual understanding, generally classified as two, the impersonalist and the personalist. Both of them, however, lead their lives according to the principles of the Vedas. Without following the principles of the scriptures, one cannot elevate himself to the perfectional stage. One who actually, therefore, understands the purport of the Shastras is considered fortunate. In human society, aversion to the principles of understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the cause of all fall-downs. That is the greatest offense of human life. Therefore, Maya the material energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is always giving us trouble in the shape of the threefold miseries. This material energy is con constituted of the three modes of material nature. One has to raise himself at least to the mode of goodness before the path to understanding the Supreme Lord can be opened. Without raising oneself to the standard of the mode of goodness, one remains in ignorance and passion, which are the cause of the maniac life. Those in the modes of passion and ignorance deride the scriptures, deride the holy man, and deride the proper understanding of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <coughs> Excuse me. They disobey the instructions of the spiritual master, and they do not care for the regulations of the scriptures. In spite of hearing the glories of, the devo of devotional service, they are not attracted. Thus they manufacture their own way of elevation. These are some of the defects of human society which lead to the demoniac status of life. If, however, one is able to be guided by a proper and bona fide spiritual master who can lead one to the path of elevation, to the higher stage, then one's life becomes successful. Thus, send the Bhaktivedanta purports to the 16th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of the divine and demoniac natures. Om Jnana Timurandasya Jnana Shalakya 
Chukshu unmidatam me not tasmai shri gudave namaha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So this verse um, is kind of a, of course, the culmination to the chapter, but it's also a culmination to the last four verses. The last four verses give us a, a certain lesson in and of themselves. So let's just review those, and then we'll give a quick review of the chapter. So. 20, 21, 22, or 20, starting with 21, Krishna describes in 20, Asarim Yonamapana, that he's describing the fate of those who are committed demons. They, uh, they take repeated births and species of demoniac life. They can never approach me. Gradually, they sink down to the most abominable type of existence. And so this is kind of a hellish existence. And therefore, Krishna says, there's three gates leading to this hell. Lust, anger, and greed. Every sane man should give these up, for they lead to the degradation of the soul. Not so easy, especially if one is being conducted by the modes of passion and ignorance. The further we are uh, uh, affected by the modes of passion and ignorance, the more uh, we'll be controlled by lust, anger, and greed. It's just like, like a, a strong drug. You know, once you go down that road, just like in the third chapter, Krishna talks about that force that impels us to do things even against our own will that we know are wrong, you know. So it's karma. The, the whole root of the whole problem is karma. From karma proceed anger and, and greed. Right? Um, so uh, he describes it there that this abhitam um, ganamitana this eternal enemy known as lust covers the knowledge of the living entity. Remember that we're always acting on the basis of our intelligence. If your intelligence is benighted, is covered over, then you're helpless. You'll be controlled by the senses, by the mind. So the intelligence is the thing. So here he says, Abhitam jnana jnana nitya vaidana. This eternal enemy known as lust uh, covers the knowledge of the living entity. Uh, Just like a fire burns. It's never satisfied. It's always burning, you know, looking for new fuel. So then wh how, do, how, does, how does lust uh, cover our knowledge? There's three elements, the three uh, aspects of our personality. Indriyani mono buddhir, asyada stada muchate, etava mohiyateja gyanamavita dehinam. Gyanamavita dehinam means covers the knowledge of the embodied soul. So the senses, the mind, and intelligence. This lust infects all of them. Indriyani mono buddhir, asyada stada muchate, situated in each of them. Through them, uh, this, this lust uh, bewilders the conditioned soul. Totally. Covering that knowledge. So, the, uh, when one is in the grips, and the, the, that, that's what it means to be a conditioned soul. It means to be under the grip of Lust and his, the con, uh, the the, the uh, that which comes after lust, namely the anger and the greed and everything else follows. It. So covering the knowledge, then what do you believe? You believe what you can see, what you can hear. You know, this is what this is reality. There's nothing beyond that, right? Isn't that the first? You remember that's the first quality of the demons. Asetyam abatishtam te jagadahu anishuram. They say there's no absolute truth. There's no life after death. You know, there's no God in control of this universe. Jagad, uh, uh, that the universe has no Ishwar. There's no God in control. Then how do things happen? Just by chance. By the chance coming together of different molecules over billions and billions and trillions and trillions of years. Gradually a simple one-celled organ is produced and more billions and billions and billions. Of and it's a stupid, uh, you know, theory. Uh, probably we often say we've never seen matter just you know organize itself into something uh, alive, but what it does is it provides a patina of logic, you know you can write theses on it and books on it, by which you don't have to worry about God. There's no God in control, so you can you can ha you can then you can say with with conviction that mantra Ishwaroham Mahambogi Siddhoham Balavansuki, I'm the control. 
So this is the problem. So once you're in the grip uh, of these three gates, Kama, uh, Kroda, Loba, Dvaram, Nashanam, Atman, the soul is virtually destroyed. It means that it's buried very deeply in material life and it's very difficult to get out. So, but there's hope, as Krishna says in text 22. It's like this is the back and forth. So one who has escaped these three gates, now how can you escape? That's another, but here he says the value of doing that, which are the, the door to darkness, tamodvarais. Darkness, you know, is another name for hell. To be naraha, these threefold uh, gates. Achadat yatmanakshreya. So you act for the ultimate good of the soul. Now you may remember this was Arjun's appeal to Krishna at the beginning in text 7 of, of chapter 2 when he finally surrendered. Karpanya dosho bahata sobhava. All of this miserly weakness and all these arguments, they've stolen away my real swabhava. In other words, I'm no longer the confident chatriya that I was. I've dropped my bow. I'm sitting on the chariot. I'm not standing. You know? So he recognizes you know, the, the, the problem. Uh, now I'm approaching you and questioning you. I am completely bewildered about dharma. We're talking about dharma here. Without dharma, human life is animal life. That's in the Hito Badesh. So, but how to be confident and absolutely sure that you're actually following the dharma for your ultimate good? So he says, I, I, don't, I don't know. I can't figure it out. I just went through a whole chapter and a few verses you know, with my idea, but it didn't solve my problem. I'm still paralyzed and I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. So he says, now I'm changing my, my approach. Yak nishitam bruhitan may the same word shreya. This word shreya comes up again and again. It means to your ultimate benefit, actual good. Nishitam, please instruct me for certain how I can achieve that. This is this is the confidence you have to have in the spiritual master in the books that this can actually give you real knowledge. Uh, now I'm no longer your friend. In the role of your friend, I'm actually your disciple. Please instruct. I, I surrender unto you, Prapandam. Please instruct me. So that's the first step, according to our great Acharya, Rupa Goswami. Uh, In other words, open up the channel of real knowledge that can come down beyond the, the, four, the three, uh, four defects here. You know, I always like to think of them uh, in, in, the, in a certain logical order. You know, the first one is we have imperfect senses, obviously. And therefore, we make mistakes, even about material things. What to speak about absolute truth is completely beyond our vision. So we always have making mistakes. And when you make the mistake again and again and again, and everyone else around you is making the same mistake, then you, that's called you're deluded or you're illusioned. I looked up this word illusioned. Illusion actually cannot be a verb. But it's, an, it, it's peculiar because illusion is a word, but only as an adjective. So it's used that way. So you, in other words, you get deep into illusion and you think what is not true is actually true. So that's, that's three of the defects, is that you're in perfect senses and therefore uh, you make mistakes, such as that we're the body, everyone, and everyone around you is encouraging you, they're thinking they're the body, so naturally you all make the same mistake and you become deluded. And when you teach that to others, you're cheating. You're giving them, you know, uh, falsity as real knowledge. So that's the four defects. And from, from one who is bound by those four f defects or uh, is, uh, could, you know, uh, suffering them, uh, you cannot get absolute knowledge, you know. You, you have to find a source beyond those four defects. That's the idea. So that, uh, that is the guru who is doing nothing but giving you the shastra as it is. You remember this nice formula for what an acharya is. Acharya, the word acharya comes from the word achar, which means behavior. Because that, that's, that's the, you know, the, the, the kind of the, the key factor. So acharya means, as Prabhupada defines several, twice, I think, in this Chaitanya Charitama, the first chapter of the Adi Lila, knows the shastra. This is a very important thing. It's very... Uh, is, uh, knows the Shastra, uh, in and out, and acts according to the tenets of the Shastra and takes the trouble to teach to others. That's the Acharya. So that you have to find someone who's, who's what, is, what is that little phrase? Again? Learn it, live it, give it. You know, this is similar. So we're all meant to become little Acharyas 
you know, for others. But so that we can bring them to the real Acharya, you know, and so but but that's how it works. So uh this so a trivatam nadika said them, then Acharya Tato Yati Padamgatim. Now he's talking about the contrast between the, the lowest destination, you know, if you just you get cast down into the lower species of life in the hellish, or you can go up to the highest destination. So now the, the key element is it's in our own hands. We can make the choice. Just like the, the illustration, you know, we have much fewer illustrations, but this is one we kept, where up the stair that goes up way up to Goloka and the stair that goes down the hill. You can choose. You know, are you going to see the path of light or the path of darkness? One leads to untold suffering and one leads to end of all suffering and immersion in great bliss. So, but then the warning verse in text 23. So now he introduces this idea of Shastra. Shastra comes in at the, at the, at the very end of this chapter. That's the saving grace. Krishna is present always in the form of Shastra. He's only present in it for a few years, relatively, himself, you know, and that only once in a day of Brahma. Let's just contemplate how fortunate we are. A mere 5,000 years ago, Krishna walked the planet. We still have Vrindavan. We have the places of Leela we can go to. And we can see. How, how often does he appear? Do you know? Do you have a kind of rough estimate of how many years between, before he comes again? You don't remember? <laughs> okay. Once in a day of Brahma. So all we need to do is figure out the day. 24 hours of Brahma, okay? Well, you, you yes, 8.4. Not 4. No, 8.64. Uh, oh, 8. Yeah, 8,640,000,000 yeah. 8, years. Because a, a, a day of Brahma, probably use the word day to mean 12 hours. So 12 hours is uh, 4, uh, is, is 4 billion, 320 million. Uh, yeah, four billion three hundred twenty million, because it's it's a uh, hundred days, which they comprise a uh, a uh, twelve hour the, the the four yugas, you know. Anyway, they add it up, multiply it out, it comes to eight billion. So eight billion uh, six uh, six hundred and forty million years before you know Krishna. Uh, every once that once he comes, and he stays for one hundred twenty five years. You know, so he's o he's only been here five thousand years. That's practically yesterday in terms of that eight billion. So we are so fortunate. And just literally this morning, in that, in that perspective, Lord Chaitanya was here. <laughs> so let's take advantage of it. <laughs> so the key is the Shastra, because whereas Krishna only comes once in a day, the Shastra is always present, you know. And especially now we're fortunate, Shastra, you know, a, a great uh, saint has living the Shastra, and can, who has the potency to um, I, uh, infuse faith in the Shastra in those who hear him and see his behavior and so forth. So that's what we're talking about here. So one who gives those, that, the vidhi, the instruction of Shastra up, and rejects them, again the demons, and they continue to act on the basis of lust, kama karataha, karata is action and kama is lust. Then what is their fate? Nasa siddhim, they don't attain perfection, they don't attain happiness, and they don't go to the paramgatim. You know, the, the last, the last this previous verse ends with the word tatoyati paramgatim, but here, this bars you from it. Therefore, this little argument he had, one should use Shastra as the pramana. This idea of pramana is so important. Pramana is evidence that you accept for how to act, how you should live your life. You have faith in it. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be Shastra. People have faith mostly in their own senses, in their teachers, their parents, when they're kids, you know, you've got to have faith. You know, but, but generally speaking, over time, the faith is betrayed. Oh, I, I, I believed in this, and then look what I did, and now look at me. You know, I took the wrong course. Isn't it? So f they finally you get cynical. I can't trust anything, for sure. You know, I got to figure it out on my own. But then you're trusting your mind, and your mind is imperfect. So, so therefore, we have to find real Shastra. This is the Baba's great gift to us, Bhagavad Gita, as it is, so we can trust it. Uh, therefore, except kaya kaya vavastito, vavastito means what to do and what not to do. This is the key. Your whole life is simply doing one thing and not another. And as you make a certain pattern of activities that you do and things that you don't refrain to do, then you formulate your destiny by, by doing that. But, if, but on what basis? Oh, my own mind. 
you know, and this group, uh, this, this site I got on the internet, you know, now I believe in that. A million different things, everything but Shastra. So one should accept Shastra, genuine Shastra, as explained by genuine devotees, uh, as one's evidence for what to do and what not to do. And then he nails it home. And, then, and understanding what the Shastra demands, you should accept that as a matter of duty. Gyatva Shastra Vidhan Uktam. Understanding the Vidhi, the instructions of Shastra, what to do and what not to, one should karma karta miharyasi, one should act uh, in that way as a matter of duty. Because it's understood that your own material desires may be, and often are, against Shastra, uh, not accepting this and rejecting it and so forth. Well, those you have to put aside. This is the, the key decision. That it's, it's not my mind I'm going to you know, follow. I'm going to follow the Shastra. And that means that you know, there's some austerity involved. And that way leads uh, to the Paramgatim. So this whole thing boils down to this. So any uh, comments or questions on that? Points? Now let's have a quick review of the chapter. Maybe we'll have time to start chapter 17, which starts with the same, you know, Shastra Vidya Mutsuja. You see that? In other words, the argument is, okay, suppose you give up Shastra. What are, then what do you do? Oh, then there's the modes of nature. Then you act in, in different, different, you have faith in something else according to the modes of nature. It's all very logical. All right, just a quick review. So this chapter, this divine and demoniac, so he begins with a nice description of 28 qualities, I believe, uh, that, are, that are divine. Uh, we'll just read it goes quickly. Fearlessness, purification. I mean, one will remember, this, you know, this is on page 616, uh, they're all divided according to the varna that you're in, or that, you, excuse me, the, uh, the uh, ashram, the sannyasis, the grahastas, like that. So, fearlessness, purification of one's existence, cultivation of spiritual knowledge, those are for the sannyasis, charity, self-control, performance of sacrifice, uh, that's for the grahastas, study of the Vedas, austerity, simplicity, nonviolence, uh, truthfulness, freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquility, those for the uh, Banaprastas and sannyasis, tranquility, aversion to fault finding, compassion for all living entities, freedom from covetousness, gentleness, modesty, steady determination, vigor, forgiveness, fortitude, cleanliness, and freedom from envy and from the passion for honor. These transcendental qualities belong to the godly men endowed with divine nature. So these are qualities you can cultivate as well. In other words, uh, by practicing Krishna consciousness, a lot these qualities naturally develop. And by cultivating the qualities, they help you to uh, cultivate Krishna consciousness. So, that's the divine. But besides these, in text 4, is it? Yeah. Now, he, he, he starts eliminating the, the demoniac qualities. And sure enough, the first one is Dumba. Remember Dumba? Dumba is pride or... Hypo especially hypocrisy in the matter of uh, trying to appear religious when you're really not. So, pride, arrogance, conceit, anger, harshness, ignorance, these qualities belong to the demonic. Uh, the transcendental qualities due to deliberation, the demonic qualities make for bondage. Don't worry, uh, son of Panda, you are born with divine qualities. So there's two kind of, kind of beings. The one is divine, the other demoniac. I've already explained to you the length of divine qualities. Now here for me are the demoniac. Now, of course... Uh, it's true, Krishna says that, but there's a, there's a way of, you know, seeing this person has this, this, this demonic quality, but they have this divine quality. You know, in, in practice, you find people who are, uh, they're not out and out died into all demons, and they're not super saints. They're somewhere in the middle, and therefore they can be purified, they can be attracted. If you see, you know, you cultivate, you preaching in such a way that their divine qualities are encouraged and they, they, they can be improved. So then uh, he describes the, the, the demoniac, pravittam chandavittam cha, they don't know what is to be done, what's not to be done. Neither cleanliness nor proper behavior nor truth is found. And notice how that echoes at the end of the chapter we read. Karya karya vabastito. You know, from Shastra you can find out what is to be done and what's not to be done. Then the, 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 the test is, are you going to actually do that? So that's, that's the whole difference here. Neither cleanliness nor proper behavior is found. They say the world is unreal. No foundation, no God in control. They say it is produced of sex desire and has no cause other than lust. Now notice that the, the you know, this is atheistic. That literally, they have no, there's no God. 
So this is, this is by contrast from the agnostic. There's a dif difference here. The agnostic simply says, I don't know. You know. And so he can be convinced and shown that God is most logical and here's Krishna and so forth. The atheist, they're, when they're like this, is very hard because they've committed themselves to this and they've you know, formulated uh, philosophies. They're following other atheists, you know, they're worshiping it. So it's, it's, uh, they're, it's often very difficult to even converse with them. Uh, following these conclusions, demoniacs who are lost to themselves, have no intelligence, engage in unbeneficial, horrible works meant to destroy the world. Now, we see many examples in the Shastra, you know, in the Bhagavatam. Uh, we know their names, Kamsev, Kashipu, and so forth. Uh, but mostly you find, uh, you know, that we, have mo we have these modern de demons also. Who they're they're simply they're, they're following exactly accumulating money, trying to accumulate power, cheat this one, lie over this way, you know. It's all around us. It's like the whole foundation of, of human uh, society is being eroded this way, you know. And this is the big you know people feel cheated. They don't know what to trust anymore. And this is a very uh, unsettling kind of a situation. But that's what we're faced with here taking shelter of insatiable lust and absorbed in the conceit of pride and false prestige, the demoniac, thus illusioned, are always sworn to unclean work attracted by the impermanent. I forgot the horrible works meant to destroy the world. So you can see, you know, the U.S. defense budget. You know, we're not at really war, you know, with Russia or anything, you know, we're not at World War II, and yet $700 billion, that's the official count. There's all kinds of other things. It's really like a trillion dollars a year. Completely wasted. Worse than wasted. What they... Horrible, unbeneficial. The biggest, the biggest uh, consumer of, of uh, fossil fuels and all this is definitely the, the military, U.S. military. So on that score also. Always sworn to unclean work, attracted by the impermanent. They believe to gratify the senses is the prime necessity of human civilization. Thus, until the end of life, their anxiety is immeasurable. Bound by a network of hundreds of thousands of desires, absorbed in lust and anger, they secure money by illegal means for sense gratification. So this is a, a, a basic point. In chapter 2, we learned the same thing. If you want to really be peaceful, then you decrease your desires and you engage in devotional service. And you can be happy and peaceful that way. Otherwise, if you're, you're seeing all oh, my happiness depends on fulfilling all of these desires, that, then you're, th th there's no end to those desires. And there's no ends to your anxiety because you can't fulfill them. Even if you temporarily do, then you're worried, oh, I won't, you know, I'll lose the money tomorrow or this person will attack or whatever, you know. There's no, the, when, when you regard matter as the source of your security and your happiness, you're going to be frustrated. This was, this was Prahlad's famous first teaching to his father. Here's a nice one. It's on your list, Uddham Shlokas. Tatsadam, his father said, what's the best thing that you learned today? Uh, that, uh, so he, uh, he said, my, my, my dear, best of the Asuras. Prabhupada makes a point. He never calls him father. So he's that. <laughs> so in two lines, he describes the human condition, you know, the ordinary person, an atheist. Uh, so the best thing I learned, Father, f uh, in, in relation to the embodied soul, Dehinam, who is sada samud vignadiyam, whose intelligence and consciousness is always disturbed. Sada samud vigna means disturbed. Samud vigna means totally disturbed. Samud vigna diyam. Why asat grahat? In like what asat grahat? In four syllables, he describes the main problem. Grahat means to hold on to. We're holding on to de for dear life to the impermanent. You know this body. This is at the beginning of the second cano. You have this body, which is the source of your happiness and security and your plans, everything's based on your false conception. But it's, it's a dangerous world, so you need a defense. It's called the soldiers. Atma Sanya is soldiers for the soul, you know. What are they going to do? Well, strong body, first of all. Keep that health together. Let's go to the gym. You know, Deha. Apatya, your uh, children, you know, your family. The Kalatra, that's the wife. She help, helps. Adishu, etc. You know, your relatives, your the, 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 the police, the army, the whole thing. You know, these will, these will protect me. Life insurance, health insurance, car insurance. You know, I'm safe. Now I'm good. I, I got it. You know, I paid the guards. You know, the, the walls are up. You know. 
So these, he calls these uh, asatsu. These are called fallible soldiers. You know, they don't. They, they, it's you're, you're putting your faith in something that ultimately will betray you. That's the problem of matter. Beginning with the body. The body ultimately goes. It all depends on this body. You have all these billions of dollars, millions of dollars, but there's a name on the account. That name belongs to your body. <laughs> you leave the body and you leave the money behind. And so what happened to all of your hopes for you know, domination? It's crazy. So that comes in at the very beginning, in the second chapter, you'll see. So, but you know, even though one sees, you know, it's obvious, you know, your grandfather died. And you know, but, but you see, but you don't see. This phrase is like an idiom. You see, but you don't understand. You're not understanding the meaning of what you're seeing. So, uh, but the, the demons, uh, traditionally, they don't want to hear about that, you know. They're placing all their faith in the temporary body and the, the associations and the alliances and all these different things they have. It's just like, like climate change. Climate change is obviously happening, you know. I was reading a history of it, like when, what was it, in the 80s? I forget the name of the guy who testified to Congress. I mean, maybe forget. But he, would, he gave this whole explanation. This is what's happening, you know, we're going up. But who, you know, didn't really catch on, you know. Then there was Al Gore, you know, right? <laughs> he, he came in a little later, and he was still telling, you know. Okay, 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 we'll have this treaty. We'll go to the Paris Treaty, you know. We had, they had one in uh, Argentina and uh, Ghana. But they're not really committed to do anything about it because the people in control are the ones who've built us thing all up, the big money men, you know. They, they continue to pump the oil. And, you know, like, and, so, and, if, and, and each country says, well, if we cut back, you know, that's just going to give those other countries a chance to do whatever they want, so we're going to pump as much as... So meanwhile, the, the earth is burning up the Arctic in Siberia, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, in a place that's been frozen. They have this permafrost. You now the permafrost is melting. Whole cities are like, going, you know, they built on the permafrost. It's a disaster. Right now, there's a big heat wave. We're, we've been spared for now, you know, in our little corner of California here. But the, the middle of the country is burning up. Record highs. I'm telling you, if it gets high, if it's 90 percent humidity and 110 degrees, you can't live. Of course, you got the air conditioning, but what happens when the, when the electricity goes out? So it's coming, but the guys in charge said, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, pay them off, pay them off, dig more wells. Pump. Isn't that what's going on? It's exactly like what we're reading in the Bhagavad Gita. By this demonic mentality, your intelligence is covered, and you're forced to act according to, you know, the, the, the dictates of lust, anger, and greed. That's what's happening. And then he has this... Uh, this, this little soliloquy of the demons, 13 to 15. So much wealth do I have today, and I will get more according to my schemes. So much is mine now, and it will increase in the future. More and more, invest in this stock, can sell that stock. He's my enemy, I've killed him already. And my other enemies I'll also kill. I'm the lord of everything, I'm the enjoyer. I'm perfect, powerful, and happy. Ishiroham Hambogi, Siddoham Bolivansuki. I'm the richest surra man surrounded by aristocratic relatives. There's no none so powerful and happy as I am. I shall perform sacrifices in name only. I shall give some charity and thus I shall rejoice. In this way such persons are deluded by ignorance. The perplexed, thus perplexed by various anxieties and bound by a network of illusions, they become too strongly attached to sense enjoyment and fall down into hell. Self-complacent, always impudent, deluded by wealth and false prestige, they sometimes proudly perform sacrifices in name only. Dumbe Navadi Purvakam. Right in the verse there. See that? That's Avidi Purvakam comes up several times in the game. Without the vidis, without the rules and regulations. Uh, bewildered by false ego, strength, pride, lust, anger, the demons become envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is situated in their own bodies and in the bodies of others and blaspheme against the real religion. Again, this word envious here means malicious, bearer of ill will. Uh, the, those who are envious and mischievous who are lowest among men I perpetually cast into the ocean of material existence into various demonic species of life. And then we, we already went over these final verses. So that's the 16th chapter. It's, it's really a nice chapter to read because you're reading about, you know, modern life. And then it, it makes you, you know, really be happy that we're at least on our way to uh, being saved from that fate. Uh, and it's all, you know, Prabhupada's mercy and Lord Chaitanya's mercy. Okay. 
So we dip into the seventh, seventeenth chapter, unless there's any discussion on these. There's several important verses. I recommend highly the ones at the end here. As a little lesson. No, it's okay. Okay, so let's start with the divisions of faith. It exactly, you know, goes right from the previous verse. Arjuna Vacha, Ye Shastra Vina Mutsuja, Yajante Shadayan Vita, Te Sham Nishta to Ka Krishna, Satvam Aho Rajastamaha. Arjuna inquired, O oh Krishna, what is the situation of those who do not follow the principles of Scripture, but worship according to their own imagination? Are they in goodness, in passion, or in ignorance? Purport. In the fourth chapter, 39th verse, it is said that a person faithful to a particular type of worship gradually becomes elevated to the stage of knowledge and attains the highest perfectional stage of peace and prosperity. In the 16th chapter, it is concluded that one who does not follow the principles laid down in the scriptures is called an asura, or demon, and one who follows the scripture injunctions faithfully is called a deva, or a demigod. Now, if one with faith follows some rules which are not mentioned in the scriptural injunctions, what is his position? This doubt of Arjuna's is to be cleared by Krishna. Of those who create some sort of god by selecting a human being and placing their faith in him, worshiping in goodness, passion, or ignorance. Do such persons attain the perfectional stage of life? Is it possible for them to be situated in real knowledge and elevate themselves to the highest perfectional stage? Do those who do not follow the rules and regulations of the scriptures, but who have faith in something and worship gods and demigods and men, attain success in their effort? Arjun is putting these questions to Krishna. Okay. Uh, I'm curious about that fourth chapter, 39th verse. What was that verse? Uh, okay. Shadha bala bate gyanam tatpadak sangyatendri, a faithful man who is dedicated to transcendental knowledge and who subdues his senses is eligible to achieve such knowledge, and having achieved it, he quickly attains the supreme spiritual peace. Okay. So it's all a question of faith, and this is chapters about the divisions of faith. So, uh, in other words, there's, there's, two, there's two basic paths. One is to accept Shastra and actually to undergo a transformation. You know, it's not that you're stuck in a certain mode and then you accept Shastra. And you, no, by accepting genuine Shastra, revealed scriptures such as Bhagavad Gita, the vidis, the instructions, what to do and what not to do, then you can change your, the mode you're in. In other words, you may start out in the mode of passion and ignorance, but if you're serious about uh, transformation, then uh, you can come up to the mode of goodness and even to the mode of pure goodness. But if someone is uh, stuck, doesn't accept Shastra, accepts somebody, something, some book, his own mind, then you're going to be in some mode and he's going to tell you how to, how to recognize that. Different kinds of worship. According to faith. Faith is an inevitable concomitant of human life. We have to have faith in something. Sri Bhagavan Vacha. Chivadha Bhavati Shadha Dehinang Sasabhavaja Satviki Rajasi Chaiva Tamasi Chetitang Shinu The Supreme Personality of God had said, according to the modes of nature acquired by the embodied soul, one's faith can be of three kinds in goodness, in passion, or in ignorance. Now hear about this purport. Those who know the rules and regulations of the scriptures but out of laziness or indolence give up following these rules and regulations are governed by the modes of material nature. According to their previous activities in the mode of goodness, passion, or ignorance, they acquire a nature which is of a specific quality. The association of the living entity with the different modes of nature has been going on perpetually. Since the living entity is in contact with material nature, he acquires different types of mentality according to his association with the material modes. But this nature can be changed if one associates with a bona fide spiritual master and abides by his rules and, and the scriptures. Gradually one can change his position from ignorance to goodness or from passion to goodness. The conclusion is that 
Blind faith in a particular mode of nature cannot help a person become elevated to the perfectional stage. One has to consider things carefully with intelligence in the association of a bona fide spiritual master. Thus one can change his position to a higher mode of nature. So this is a very important point, as I, I was just pointing out, is that we're going to learn about these different, you know, uh, kinds of foods and different uh, modes of nature and activities, austerities and different modes. Um, but nothing is nothing is uh, cast in stone. In other words, we're we're of a certain predominant mode of nature when we in our conditioned state, and if we don't come in touch with genuine shastra and genuine source of knowledge, then. We got, we're like leaves blowing in the wind. According to what we happen to associate with, you know, uh, uh, we'll develop a certain mode and then be, be attracted to other things. And in modern age, it's, it's a high chance of like extreme degradation. You know, it just pervades everywhere. So you're kind of helpless. But as soon as you get uh, exposure to genuine knowledge and good association, then... Uh, you again, the intelligence becomes uh, a little purified, and then you can guide yourself. In other words, okay, now I know why this experience, and, and let's face it, this friend or this person is not good for me. By that association, I'll get influenced, I'll get down in the modes of nature, and this is to my detriment. So I'm going to associate this way. I'm going to read this book, I'm going to watch this, I'm going to hear this, I'm going to associate, you know. And that's the, the, then you're on the path of elevation. So it all depends on uh, what you, how you associate. It will d you will develop the mode of passion, ignorance, or goodness according to your association. Sandak, sandayake, kama. So he's going to describe various things in the different modes. And uh, it's very illuminating. All right, let's do one more. One or two more. Text three. Satvanu rupa sarvasya. Shadha bhavati bharata. Shadhama yo yam purusho. Yo yat shadha saeva saha. O son of Bart, according to one's existence under the various modes of nature, one evolves a particular kind of faith. The living being is said to be of a particular faith according to the modes he has acquired. Purport. Everyone has a particular type of faith regardless of what he is. But his faith is considered good, passionate, or ignorant according to the nature he has acquired. Thus, according to his particular type of faith, one associates with certain persons. Now, the real fact is that every living being, as is stated in the 15th chapter, is originally a fragmental part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, one is originally transcendental to all the modes of material nature. But when one forgets his relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and comes into contact with the material nature in conditional life, he generates his own position by association with the different varieties of material nature. The result in artificial faith and existence are only material. Although one may be conducted by some impression or some conception of life, originally he is nirguna or transcendental. Therefore, one has to become cleansed of the material contamination that he has acquired in order to regain his relationship with the Supreme Lord. That is the only path back without fear, Krishna consciousness. If one is situated in Krishna consciousness, then that path is guaranteed for his elevation to the perfectional stage. If one does not take to this path of self-realization, then he is surely to be conducted by the influence of the modes of nature. The word shuddha, or faith, is very significant in this verse. Shuddha, or faith, originally comes out of the mode of goodness, One's faith may be in a demigod or some created god or some mental concoction. One's strong faith is supposed to be productive of works of material goodness, but in material condition, conditional life, no works are completely purified. They are mixed. They are not in pure goodness. Pure goodness is transcendental. In purified goodness, one can understand the real nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As long as one's faith is not completely in purified goodness, the faith is subject to to contamination by any of the modes of material nature. The contaminated modes of material nature expand to the heart. Therefore, according to the position of the heart in contact with a particular mode of material nature, one th one's faith is established. 
Shodha means that where you place your heart. It, it should be understood that if one's heart is in the mode of goodness, his faith is also in the mode of goodness. If his heart is in the mode of passion, his faith is also in the mode of passion. And if his heart is in the mode of darkness, illusion, his faith is also thus contaminated. Thus we find different types of faith in this world, and there are different types of religions due to different types of faith. The real principle of religious faith is situated in the mode of pure goodness, but because the heart is tainted, we find different types of religious principles. Thus, according to different types of faith, there are different kinds of worship. So one thing that just jumped out at me as I was reading this first paragraph, this verse from the 13th chapter. Purushak pakati stohi mungte pakati jan gunan karanan gunasangosya sadasadyoni janmasu. It's exactly pertinent. The living entity, Purusha, in this material world, now by nature we're Prakriti, we're Pura Prakriti, but when we're trying to enjoy separate from Krishna, we're known as Purusha, as the Purusha, the enjo false enjoyer. Prakritisto, the, the living entity, the uh, conditioned living entity in, within material nature, Prakritisto, he, Bhunkte Prakriti Jan Gunan, he experiences, tries to enjoy, but also suffers, uh, Prakriti Jan Gunan, the modes of nature generated from that prakriti. Purushak prakriti sohi bhunkte prakriti jan gunan. And karanam gunasangosya. The karana means cause. That famous phrase, sarva karana karanam. Krishna is the cause of all causes. Karanam gunasangosya. For him, the, uh, the way in which he associates with those modes, uh, sadasad yoni janmasu, gives rise to him taking a good or bad birth. You know, you go up or you're down or you stay in the same. It all depends on how you associate with the modes. Now, without any reference point, without any knowledge, whatever modes you happen to be in, you know, whatever, you know, you have your friends and he gets into the mode of ignorance, come on, let's drink, you know, you're in the mode of ignorance. In other words, you don't know what's going to happen. But in this age, especially, you'll be degraded. But if you consciously try to cultivate the mode of goodness, that's the whole idea behind these ashrams, is that it's a controlled environment where, you know, through the rules and regulations, then you regulate it and you come to the mode of goodness. And that's a great, that's the only platform upon which you can really build some sub substantial advancement, the mode of goodness. So, uh, and as, but, but if whatever mode you happen to be in, that's where your, your, your faith is, is settled. Just like someone in the, you know, in the, in the mode of ignorance, what is his faith in, you know? Uh, if I can just get some, you know, this drink or this drug, and then I'll be happy. <laughs> At least I won't be as, you know, agitated as I am now. I'll have some kind of relief, you know. So what, w that's the faith. If somehow you can acquire it by hook or crook, you know. You know. It's, a, it's a almost animalistic. It's tragic, actually, for a human being to be in that situation. But that's, uh, you know, that happens. In your mode of passion, okay, if I can just make some money, you know, and get ahead, I'll be able to buy that. Your f that's your faith. You work like anything. These guys come out of MIT, they go to Wall Street, you know. Maybe I can make, you know, be, make millions of dollars, they work 80 hours a, a, a week, you know. They're interns, they don't get any money, you know, but sometimes they learn. Their faith is, if I just learn the ropes, you know, I can also make this investment. In it. They're all thinking. Every moment of the day, you know, if you really want to get ahead, you have to be aware of what's being sold now in, in, in Thailand and, you know, what's the price there. Can you imagine? That's the consciousness, money consciousness. How degrading that is. It's mentioned in the fifth, fifth, fifth chap, fifth cano. You know, it's the hellish. So, uh, and if your faith is in the mode of goodness, then, you know, you'll be more thoughtful, you'll be more open to these kind of things. Or at least to try to lead a pure life, vegetarian out in the country, you know. Whatever. You know. So you can see how where your heart is at, what you're attracted to, this determines what your faith is. So that's why, you know, Krishna, he <laughs> attract us you know, he's attracting us through so many ways, through his, his name, his form, his qualities, and so forth. Because then, then the, the real purification thing takes place. And you can come even to the, you know, above the modes. And the mamchi uh, over you can transcend the modes. So, real, fa real faith in Krishna consciousness, against once, once again, shraddha shabde vishras kare sudha dhanas joy krishna bhakti kare sarva karma kadohi. That, uh, firm determination and firm conviction, unshakable conviction, that just by practicing Krishna consciousness, all my aspirations will be, will be fulfilled. I don't have to worry about anything else. 
there's a way of maintaining body and soul together within Krishna consciousness, everything else, even family life, everything is there. But Krishna has to be in the center according to the Shastra and the instructions of Guru. And that's pure faith that we try to cultivate. And now we have to adjourn because time is up. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hari Hari Bhav.